Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Conversations with Nicole. I'm excited today to have my good friend Dennis Warden, the Senior Director of Darlington Raceway with me today. Dennis, you're a friend, but we're also work colleagues. Man, it's good to see you. How are you? It's good to see you too. I'm doing really good, doing really good. It's been a uh, hectic few weeks around here at Darlington Raceway and I'm just uh, really pleased that you asked me to come on uh, with you and, and looking forward to doing this interview. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm happy to have you and I thought it would be a really cool thing to give our viewers, followers an idea of what it was like, you know, at the track in May when you had these races knowing COVID-19 was the reason that halted a lot of things, but you were one of the first sporting events to open back up to say, get those, get those wheels turning again. And Darlington got to start the NASCAR season. Talk about how that came about, what it was like, and where we go from here. Well, I mean, it was quite a roller coaster, to say the least. I mean, you know, all of us here at the racetrack were impacted just like everybody else was. You know, mid-March hit. Um, obviously, this became a, a much bigger deal than a lot of people anticipated. And then, you know, we were working from home for, for several weeks and staying inside just like everybody else. And then I think it was right around the end of April, so maybe about five, six weeks into the stay-at-home, uh, you know, NASCAR and, and their strong leadership that we have in this company, they, they basically <clears throat> came up with a, a really good solid plan that they had to present to the state of North Carolina and the state of South Carolina, the governor's offices to try to, and to the, to the health regulators and, and everybody that was involved in the process to try to get a plan approved to get back to racing. And it really was important for our sport, as you know, being a longtime fan and a longtime media yeah. member that has covered it um, here in Darlington, it's it's just so important that we get the sport back running again because of sponsorship, because of, you know, ads, because of, you know, just the whole business model in general is, right. is dependent on, um, you know, getting on, being on TV, getting fans in the stands. And we're no different than any sports league in that way. But it, for us, seeing as that NASCAR, you know, purchased the, uh, our company, the racetrack side of the business back in the fall, um, they, they, de they really needed to get back on, on television. And it was really important. And so at the end of April, they, they came up with this plan, you know, our, the leadership team at, in NASCAR, and uh, was able to receive blessings from South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster and, and then North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. Um, <clears throat> and then around the 1st of May, you know, they said, hey, you know, they were, I think they initially were, <clears throat> you know, looking to, toward the Charlotte, to the Coca-Cola 600 weekend Hi. in May, you know, um, and then all of a sudden Darlington became more of a reality because it was so close to Charlotte where all the race teams are, are located and where the race cars are being built. So um, they thought, well, if we can do this a couple hours away, it gives them a good understanding of the logistics of, of moving back and forth from Charlotte. And obviously with the weather situation we had uh, throughout that week, uh, it, it was a easy access to get to Charlotte to get back is needed and you know the teams and the, the personnel and the NASCAR folks did not want to stay in hotels they didn't want to you know be in airplanes you know going to different facilities around the country they wanted to keep it close so they could come to Darlington and then come right back so um, when that got announced in, in first of May it was like oh my like it's time to get back to work and even though we weren't necessarily you know back at the office yet uh, uh, several of us you know had to make the effort to come in here and really sure. uh, obviously with Kerry Tharp here our track president and, and his leadership uh, we had to get things ready and and our vice president Dennis Adcock uh, who does all of our operations here I mean the burden was really on him to try and get the facility ready again because it sat here for six seven weeks with nothing being nothing. done to it yeah not, yeah, so not I even mean, painting the stripes uh, where yeah. the parks were nothing. <laughs> right, that's right. So I mean, it was, 
it, you know, the grass was two feet tall. You know, it was like, in, it was really him and his team that really had a huge hand in getting the facility ready. Um, but for me, like, you know, working on all the pre-recordings of the national anthem and the, and the pre-race ceremonies that were taking place on television, that was done virtually. I mean, ju just trying to get a lot of those things in place, working with the NASCAR group, and uh, it was it it was different. It was an it was an unusual experience having three races in a in such a small period of uh, such a small stretch of time, and it was just. I don't know. It was just a different experience. I think you and I talked before we went on, on this interview that, you know, it, it was very surreal. The whole thing was to have no fans here and to, to have an experience of, of seeing a NASCAR race for the first time, probably in its history without fans. It was just a very unusual experience. Yeah, no screaming and yelling, no popping of the champagne, no no people booing, no people cheering, no people, <laughs> no chicken wings flying, none of that, you know, no souvenirs, no right. crazy campers and people in the yeah. infield to just make a whole, almost a whole week of it, you know. Well, and, and you know, having to temperature check every person that comes in the property, I mean, there was probably 1,100 people here in the facility. I mean, you had at least probably around 700 on the team side you know yeah. each team all 40 teams got to bring i think anywhere from 13 to 16 personnel per team and then you've got the nascar folks here you've got the track personnel you've got the tv folks trying to get it on tv the cameramen the spotters i mean you have a between a thousand eleven hundred people here having to go through temperature checks um the way they did it was every team got assigned a certain time of when they could come to the facility. So gotcha. just for example, you know, Joe Gibbs racing on Sunday, they had to check their team had to come in at nine 30. Right. And then at 10 o'clock it was Hendrick Motorsports and 10 30, you know, so they had a stage system mm -hmm. in place that, um, but without fans, it, it just, I don't know. I, I was walking around the property the day of the, of the real heroes 400 on Sunday at, um, on May 17th. And I was walking around about an hour before the race, and I was like, I, I don't really have a lot to do right this second. Like, it's just weird. I'm so used to running around on a normal race weekend, right, wide open. And now um, to not have that, and to because there's no fans and no pre-race concerts and no, you know, it was just, it was just yeah, it was just so strange. Yeah, it was strange. And the strangest part of all is when Kevin Harvick won that first race on that Sunday. And when he got out of the car, and I never actually saw the interview until the next day on TV, um, you could tell how difficult it was for him to give that interview um, because he's just used to, like you said, there was no cheering or booing or no fireworks or anything like that. So, and to see, and then to come to Victory Lane, which is kind of where I was stationed, and there was only three people in Victory Lane total. It was the ca cameraman, a photographer, a, a, a person from NASCAR, and the driver. And that was it. Oh, and the race God. Car. Yeah, and it was just so, and it was so, and it, yeah, it was like a pin. You could hear a pin drop. Literally, you could hear a pin drop in the facility right after a race. It was just, it was just an unusual experience. Well, you know, when you are in that element and that's how you're used to responding, it's those things that you just mentioned that weren't there that almost fire people up, help them get that exciting interview or, you know, and really I would think that even the drivers when they're driving, they have that sense of people around them and, and that mm -hmm. fuels the excitement and the adrenaline and keeps you going. So I'm sure right. that played a, uh, you know, a part in their response to all of it as well, but you know, you pulled it off. Mm -hmm. You surprisingly <laughs> check that off you know this day in history that that happened and so if you have to do it again you can I hope we don't <laughs> right? well, that's a that's a well i mean in this in this in this environment right now and where we're at you know with, with the way coronavirus is um you just don't truly know like when something's gonna flare up or when there could be another hot spot or you just don't know how this is going to go in the future and you know i'm not you know i i don't i would like to think that well we're not going to have another one of these types of races yeah. in the future but i i'm not going to say never because you just don't truly know how the environment and which states are going to be open and which aren't and 
maybe something flares up and they're going to have to go back to restrictions. Who knows? I mean, the right. next, you know, the next six months to a year of our lives is going to be a little bit different in my opinion. And, oh, I think that most people would agree with that. Yeah. And it's, so we'll see what happens in the future for sure. I mean, we're never, we're not going to say no. So right. if we have to step into that role, we will again. You know, I think that's the thing. You always have to be looking at how can we do things differently given our circumstances. So let's fast forward a little bit. We are looking to have a race on Labor Day weekend. Uh, Southern 500, it's huge. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. I love the boiled peanuts to the guy who's there always selling them, you know, and I love to see the people. I love to see the drivers. I love being in the media room, the excitement, you know, you've got media from all over the country and the world and just fans get excited. So we don't know what's coming up, but we know we will have a race. So talk about what you guys are thinking there at the track as you're looking ahead to Labor Day weekend. Well, I, yeah, we when we announced these May races, uh, you know, we did put in that press release that we are we are still planning on having Labor Day, you know, weekend is our race weekend, and and so September fourth through the sixth is when it's still scheduled, and it's our plan is to have have the event, and obviously at this time we don't really truly know one hundred percent if we're going to have fans or not um, there. Uh, you know, right now the the events in the foreseeable future, at least to the end of June here, um, are not going to have fans, but that could change in the summertime. Yeah. And so we're, you almost have to prepare two different ways, but you prepare I will for say, the worst and hope for the best. <laughs> well, but even if you have a, well, that's true. But if you have, if you have a fan scenario, is that even going to be a full grandstand scenario? Is that going to be with social distancing standards maybe still in place at that point? Are you going to have to see all your fans six feet apart from one another or as in their little groups or families or whatever? I mean, and if that's the case, I mean, how many people can you really uh, get to capacity with when you have to have six feet in front of that, you know, or, or apart from people? So, you know, you, there's a lot of different scenarios that are sure. going to play into it. And, and if you look at where we're at today based on ticket sales, you know, if we have to social distance, we may not have to sell any more tickets the rest right. of the year because we may not have the adequate, you know, we don't have 100,000 seats here. That's so right. we only have 48,000, 50,000 seats here. So um, there's going to be a lot that plays into that over the next few months. And right. again, not to praise our leadership team too much but they, they've done a great job they really have they've what you did in may you pulled it off and i mean yeah. it's fantastic i mean the only problem we really had at that point was the rain <laughs> yeah that's right and you can't control the weather you can't for control sure. the weather but they've done a great job of looking at all scenarios i mean steve phelps and and you know all the people involved in that whole process from Steve all the way down, they've, they are looking at every single opportunity, whether it's limited fans, whether it's no fans, whether it's, you know, full capacity. Uh, they've, they've been, as far as I'm concerned, as far as professional sports are concerned, they've been the leaders as far as, you know, where, what they've done and how far we've been able to come in such a short period of time compared to the other sports leagues. It's pretty amazing. So, Definitely. you know, we're expecting to race. We'll race in September, and hopefully you will be there. Hopefully a lot of people will be involved in it like it always is, but we'll know more in the future, I guess. Okay, you know. so I want to reflect a little bit on my love for racing. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories, and then I've got, I've got, I've got an idea. You don't know this is coming. So when I was a little girl, uh, my dad's deceased. He died when I was 18 and he was 42, but we used to practice um, and we would record and he would do, gentlemen, start your engines. And so I would practice that. So I'm thinking since I am retiring full time from News 13 in November, maybe there's an opportunity for me to say that somewhere if we get to come, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm just thinking. And then um, I'm a big, you know, I was a bit, I'm from Spartanburg. I was a big um, David Pearson fan. And one last story, because oh. we're about to run out of time. One of my early days at Darlington, I waited for Dale Earnhardt Sr. to come out of the bathroom so I could meet him. That's oh, all. Really? That's all I got. That's pretty impressive. Uh, I didn't know that. If I'm determined to do something, I will get it done. <laughs> so think well, about that. Gentlemen, start your engines. That may be that may be for me this year. 
<laughs> wow, I like it. Oh, I love that you're a big fan. I mean, it really am. I mean, yeah. that means a lot to us. I mean, you know, you understand the importance of what Darlington means Absolutely. to not only our area, but the whole state and the whole region. Yeah. And to be able to have you part of this community uh, for as long as you've been part of it and uh, being such an ambassador for us, I mean, we can't thank you enough for, okay. for what you've done for our community. And, thank you. and I'm, when I heard that you were deciding to retire, I was, you know, I was really sad about it. You know, you've done you've wonderful things and you've been a mainstay on television for so many people. And even though I've only been here 10 years, you know, it, I've never stopped watching channel 13 and you and Bob and everybody else. Right. And so it's, it's a, it's a sad day, but it's a joyous day too, because you get to spend the rest of your life doing the things that you want to do, yeah. which is uh, fantastic. So, you know, all of us at the racetrack appreciate what you've done and what you've brought and your passion to, for Darlington and the racing. And, and I didn't truly know, honestly, some of those stories. So it's kind of neat to see how big of a fan you really are. We're going to have to work on some things for sure. So. Well, I appreciate your kind words. We'll wrap this up. And I want to thank you again for spending some time with me today. And hopefully I'll see you in September at the track Too Tough to Tame. Well, I appreciate it, Nicole. Thank you for having me on. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you too, Dennis. All right. Bye-bye.